Hello and welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Well today on the channel I'm going to address uh, a question that was posed to me uh, on the comments there last night on the last videos. Um, the question was about marking out handles without a template and uh, a young fellow by the name of John O.C. posted that question. Good question and I, I actually thought about this and you know sometimes when you do these videos you actually rush through the content and you don't probably put as much detail into explaining how you did it, how you marked it out, etc. So today I'm just going to address some of those little things that I probably feel as I've rushed through, as I've got a number of um, videos on handle making. There's a playlist of handles, handle making in my video list. So I'm going to address uh, quite a, a few things today, just hopefully in a short amount of time to make it clear for you guys out there. And the first one is styles of hammer handles, so uh, I'll cover that. Also wood selection and uh, orientation of a grain. Uh, marking or making a template, whether it be a paper template or a, a plywood template or MDF template or tin template for future use. Um, cutting and shaping of the handle. Now I won't show you how to do the cutting and shaping side because that varies uh, in accordance to what you want to make, what sort of handle you want to make. Some you can actually do the cutting out quite simply and then use a router to mould the edges and it'll actually fit the handle quite good. Even with a uh, claw hammer handle like I did last time, you can actually cut it out quite simply by, by hand, even with a coping saw or a fret saw, or like I say, electric jigsaw, handheld jigsaw, and you can actually uh, get a fair bit of accuracy straight up and then just rough it down with some rasps and some sandpaper around the corners even with some sandpaper, or you could spoke shave the corners if you wanted to, to get a handle that's practical and usable, and that's what we're after. Look, if you want something for good looks, uh, you might have to spend a bit more time, but if you want something that's practical and usable and strong, that could last many years. Now, I'm going to show you a selection of hammers here, from ball pin through to claw hammers, and so forth. And some of these handles are fairly old, and they've lasted a long time. And you know, I'll, I'll look back at some of the early hammers I did, uh, sorry, the handles I did for some of these early hammers, and look, oh, they were as rough as anything now I look back. And, uh, but you know what, they're still being used today, they're still a practical hammer handle, and they're still quite good. So I'm going to try to address that today, so I'll show you how uh, some of these things right now. Alright, so below me on the table, I have a series of homemade hammer handles. These are all homemade, these hammer handles. And, um, oh, except this one. This one here, except this one up the end here that I'll show you in a minute. So these are the claw hammer handles. This is the last one I did um, in the video last, and I carved that basket weave pattern. This was something different. I did that. Um, now, standard hammer handle would be a square eye. So this is a claw hammer. Would be have a square eye on it. However, you do get claw hammer heads with a round eye or an oval eye. Sometimes they're more rounder than they are oval. This one's an oval one, which if you wanted one, the oval is better than the round because it gives more strength, um, depending on the size of the head. If it's just a tack hammer handle, the little round one's not a problem. So this was a handle, and basically this was just done with a router. Marked out, shaped up, and done with the router. The eye uh, was oval, so you could shape that quite good. It was a, just a simple made hammer handle. I just marked it out, did it the way I wanted to do it, and cut it out. This this handle here, okay, so I had a template that I'd already marked out, and I basically got that shape. Just had a rough idea what it was like off an old board hammer handle that I had laying around. So that's a board hammer handle. Uh, I, I didn't buy it. I got it from somewhere. I wouldn't have a clue. Probably picked it up of a job in some rubbish. Uh, the bit of blood vein there, probably not the best thing to have in a hammer handle. But it's an old, I'd say a bit of gum or something like that. But it was a rough shape like that. Now I didn't copy that exactly because it's got a hollow on the handle. Now you could put that hollow straight back in the handle quite good. I kept mine parallel. It's, you know, it gives me a good firm grip on it. But you could definitely put that hollow back in it. The shape of your handle uh, is determined by what you want and the size of your hand. 
I would not go too thin uh, either way. I'd try to keep the, the strength, especially in the side elevation width here, uh, probably broad because that gives you strength, especially in a claw hammer where you're levering to pull nails out like this. Um, you know, really you, you want a bit of strength. And grain, on, grain orientation, I, I believe, is pretty crucial when it comes to that. This claw hammer handle here I made many years ago, still going, it's a bit of blue gum or something like that, and uh, it, it's still going, has been for years. These are tack hammer handles, just simple handles that you can make. Uh, grain orientation is not so crucial with them, because they're only light duty, it's not like you're pulling uh, big three inch nails here with them, you know, you're pulling small brads at the most, and panel nails, etc. You're up with them. Then you move on to your ball peen hammer handles. Now this is a large ball peen hammer. Uh, wouldn't be able to tell you how many pounds it is. Quite heavy actually. And it's probably the largest ball peen hammer I have. Uh, you get an idea of that. And this handle I made many years ago too. Just cut out to the shape I wanted it. And what I did with this one, I, I roughly routed the edges. I put it between the centers on the lathe and I sanded it in the lathe which rounded the corners more of a, a uniform shape. I've done that with quite a few and it works out quite good. This one here has been done that way where I've uh, turned it roughly in the lathe uh, from a rectangular piece of timber and as you can see that's round that neck of that handle there and when I got to the head I just planed that down so it went through the eye good and all different shapes and sizes. So this one here is probably one of my favourite designs. It was a very simple one to make. Um, the eye, eye didn't turn out probably as good as it could but a lot of ball peen hammers is hard to get the eye dead, dead right these aren't offset turned one day I might do a video on offset turned these have been going well for years so they're working fine uh, like I said you can make them any shape or design you want see uh, that one there I just band sawed the sides down kept this part uh, roughly not quite square rectangular but I routed just use the router to do the corners with. Quite comfortable. This one here lasted donkey's years now. I wouldn't be able to tell you how. But it's been a very handy long handle ball peen hammer to use. So shape is up to you entirely. These are my son. Some of uh, the ones we did years ago in school for my son. And um, he's, he's had these in his toolbox. And they're quite good for what they are. Hence the handle. See, look, almost square. But comfortable to hold, and this part's been roughly turned down, I think, of the lathe, and then he shaped the end of the high to suit the head. Same with that claw hammer, little little tiny claw hammer. <coughs> now, <coughs> excuse me, I did say uh, I made them all, but this is one I didn't, and you can basically see what I've done here. Um, this, I think, I found this hammer on the road, and I think I saw the head. In one spot on the road and the handle in another. I think it's come off the back of a vehicle, hit the road, the handle's broken. So I've just picked it up off the road and all I've done is cut the handle off where it was broken, shaped it down and made it into a short hand, short handle ball peen hammer. I hope you can see that. I hope I'm going here. Yeah, there we go. Short handle ball peen hammer. And it works well for what it is. All right, now let's go on to um, some styles of heads. And I'll explain some eye sizes, etc. I won't go into pretty well the how to do the eye on a bull peen. That's pretty well another style of video I should do. Either offset, turned, or how to show how I shape that down. So I'll just go on to show you how uh, some other claw hammer heads and explain a bit about that. Okay, I did neglect to show you one other hammer. <laughs> it's a hammer. Now, look, like I said, there's... There's so many different types of um, hammer handles that we can do. You can do your claw hammer, your ball peen hammer, um, tack hammer, sledge hammer. Literally a block splitter handle is a hammer handle and, and, and a mallet uh, handle is pretty well a hammer handle too. So here's, here's an old mallet that I made many years ago. It's quite large as you can see. Um, I, yeah, you can see that. That's good. Sometimes I go out of view. That's one of my biggest faults. Doing these videos. So this is a mallet, it's probably about oh, four and a half inches in diameter I'd say and the head is probably nearly a foot wide, uh, somewhere between 11 inches and a foot wide 
and it's just got PVC around there. And I actually made this. Uh, we we're having a uh, get together, and and uh, there was a heap of young blokes that were coming to this get together. So I made one of those high striker things, uh, like they have on Sideshow Alley at the show, where you have the big mallet and you hit the the uh, lever and it hits the thing up and hits the bell and you know it's supposed to prove how tough these young blokes are and all that sort of stuff so I just made this for these young fellas that were in the group that we we're with and I thought well that'll be fun from the to play with while we're there and that's how I did I had a bit of rubber car tire down the bottom that they had to hit which was on a lever which struck a weight that went up and rung the bell if they managed to get that high but that was a that's a hammer handle there that is made that was turned that handle so as the head turned, uh, I, I drilled a hole for the spigot and simply just put a batten screw in the other side to hold the handle in after I glued it. And it look, it's years old. It's done a lot of work, as you can see. It's just being sawed off on the ends when I did it. But it did the job fine for what it was. All right, let's go on to, like I say, styles of heads now. Okay, so now we're going to cover hammer heads. And these are just, at the moment, these are claw hammer heads. Now, like I said... On my previous video, the last time when I did uh, the video on the claw hammer head, I explained that I believed that claw hammer uh, hand, head handles were the easiest to make. And I still believe that because they're very basic. Because the, the hardest part I find on a hammer head, head to get right is the eye or the part that fits through the eye of the head. So this is the eye of the head. To fit that through there, uh, on, especially on a ball pin which is oval, and some ball peen hammers, the sides of the oval aren't parallel. It'll go in, it'll be narrow in the middle of the ball peen than it will be at either edge. And um, which can create some fun because you've got to make the end of your handle so it fits through the narrowest part. And <laughs> even with some claw hammer heads, the top is fractionally wider than the bottom, which is not a problem because uh, as you can see in this hammer head here, there's a couple of wedges and that actually expands it this way as well as your timber wedge that goes this way uh, so on a, on a say that'll be about a 20 inch hammer head um, a 20 inch sorry that's an inch by um, well that's an inch by about five eighths still which this is a standard sort of handle and the handle is already this is a, a factory handle this handle this handle here is an inch by about five eighths so all you'd have to do with this handle to fit was is uh, cut a, a wedge groove and pretty well drive it in, or just shape it a fraction and drive it in. Now on a normal hammer handle, you will have to do some sort of shaping because uh, your head might be a, a foreign-made head or a weird shape or designed head, which you'll have to shape your handle a fraction for. But um, they make handles for common hammer heads, I find. So this is a like I say, about a 20 ounce hammer head, and if I knock that old bit of handle out, that would probably fit. It's a fairly unique hammer head, it's got a little spot here where you can put your nail to drive it hand free uh, first, which is a good one. Cheney used to do, or Cheney, some people pronounce it Cheney, but Cheney uh, used to make those too. They had two balls in the back here and a little groove, and you could strike your nail in first. Uh, they were magnetic, I think, and uh, you could strike your nail in first. Some tack hammers have that too. So here's another one. This is probably, uh, you know, 10 ounce, uh, or 12, so probably more like 12 ounce. It's an inch by half inch. So straight away we're down on the width. So you, if we'd use a standard handle, you'd have to shave that neck down. Uh, here's another one. It's a, probably a fairly large one. It's, it's an inch and a quarter at the top, but it's not the top you've got to worry about. It's the bottom, because this is the, the part that's got to fit through so it's an inch by five eighths two so you know we could pretty so well safely work so a common size uh, for the bottoms of a 20 ounces is roughly an inch this one's just under an inch it's a bit over seven eighths actually uh, it's about seven eighths by five eighths uh, so there you go that's another one this is here's another one Keep on measuring the top. It's about seven eighths too, by about just. Oh, it's about um, yeah, it's, it's just under five eighths that one. And as you go smaller, of course your eye hole 
uh, get smaller. And this is where you can run into trouble if they're Chinese made heads or Taiwanese made heads or some other foreign made head you will run into situations where you mightn't be able to get a handle hence you have to make one but you like the hammer head so th these are two little small ones uh, to get a tack hammer handle to suit something like that would be pretty hard to, to get from your local hardware store so hence the need to make your own hammer handle and uh, like I say that's a an oval one very similar to a ball peen hammer handle uh, head and you can make them too the rounder ones are harder to make, and if you're very fortunate and blessed, you might have a router bit that has that same radius there that you can just cut it with with the router bit. I will get some ball pin hammer handles, or uh, hammer heads and show you them too. So, here's some ball pin hammer heads. Um, some ball pin hammer heads are more round than oval. I like, if you're going to get a ball pin hammer head, try to get it more oval. I believe, see, look at this here. And these are easy to fit handles too. That's got a nice oval hole in it, fairly old head, and same there. So that gives you an idea. And look, the basics in marking at the sides and the edge elevation are the same, but it's when it comes to shaping the eye and the ball pin and, and the claw hammer, they, they vary totally. Okay, let's go on to styles of wood. Now, wood is crucial. Uh, for your style of hammer handle. Uh, now, look, you could you could really go to town on what's the best timber to use. But, you know, like some of you guys in America, uh, your sort of American hickory varieties, uh, more than great, and sometimes you can get down here in Australia too. Um, and a lot of handles are already made out of American hickory over this way. Uh, you can use some of your wattles, black wattles here in Australia. Uh, spotted gum, blue gum. In America, your American oak is still okay, but probably not as great as like your hickory, uh, American ash. Of course, you've got your merbell or your quiller, which can be used. It's not as great as like your, your ash or, or your spotted gum or your American hickory. Some of the mountain ashes here in Australia, quite good. I mean, in your nation or in your area, um, there'd be, you know, older people or People that have been around for long enough that might be able to, able to give you some advice on what you could make a good strong handle out of. But I would say any hardwood that's got a good long grain, that's not too twisted or anything like that, uh, would be quite stable. You could use softer woods uh, or semi hardwoods on smaller hammer heads like that, uh, or even down to that one there. You know, you can use a, a, probably a softer wood because you're not driving huge nails and levering huge nails out with the claw side of it. Same with your ball peen hammers. You could probably go to a semi hardwood even on them too. But I'd still stick with the longer grain. You don't want something flying back and hitting you in the head. Right, now that's covered. Uh, I will go into also um, uh, grain orientation. So uh, let's, let's have a look at that for a claw hammer for a starter. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Let's let's say this is a claw hammer head that we're going to fit a handle in this way like this. Uh, you say, well, what orientation would you put the grain with that? Well, if I was going to orientate the grain, looking at the end of the handle in relation to the claw, this being the claw, I'm a bit of an artist, there's the, the hammer head, and this is the end of the handle. Uh, I'll just zoom in a bit for you for that. Okay, so this is your claw hammer. Like I say, I'm a real artist. Uh, this is your claw. And this is the end of the handle. So what I would do, considering when you use a claw hammer, there's going to be a, a lot of levering like this. Uh, it's not so much side movement like that at all. At all, really. So I'm going to want my grain to be strongest from front to back, from the hammer head back. Now in saying that too, you've got to have a little bit of flex too. You can't have total rigidity, but timber in itself has a, has flex it allows. I would have a tendency to go front to back grain like this, grain orientation. However, in saying that, and I've said it before, if the grain orientation was something like this or less, 
I wouldn't go anything probably over 45 degrees. Uh, you know, like uh, if you went to the, so that's about 45 degrees there. If um, this was the end of the handle and it was sort of more like 30 degrees, uh, like that, uh, to your uh, direction of blow or directional levering, that's fine too. It, on this handle here, I sanded it. I don't know if you can see it, um, but the grain orientation is probably somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees in direction of blow. So there being the end of the head, the head would be down here like this. Uh, and you can see, and which I think is acceptable for a claw hammer or a, a smaller hammer. When you start going up into your uh, sledge hammers, etc., yes, I think it's pretty crucial that you get the maximum strength. Now, why do I say that? In saying that, I'll explain some things. If you have, I'll just grab this bit of timber for rough uh, idea. If you had your grain going like this, what I found over the years when handles break, it's because, well, misuse mainly, but a lot of times this part of the handle, we'll just zoom out again so we can sort of, hang on, I'm sorry, I'm zooming the wrong way. Okay, so it's because this part of the handle is damaged a lot of times and it's been flogged around and has been abused. And eventually it'll get, get some marks across here and if the grains are the wrong way it'll split away sometimes back through here like this and I've had it happen really I've had it happen where it's split away and I'll mark this with a pen it doesn't worry me and it'll split away or splinter away at the front and then you'll get a scenario where it's breaking away and I'll give you a scenario of what happens then you get people they do this now this little ball peen hammer handle it's a very narrow one. I don't know why they made it narrow, but look, it's obviously lasted, but it started to splinter away up the top of you. Now the grain orientation when I looked at it wasn't too bad, but I don't know if the timber choice was great. But whichever case, this is here has been flogged around a bit and mauled a bit, and there made that plant point weaker. And that's one of the main causes. Some people put heat shrink around that or some thin wall polythene pipe or PVC pipe they hit it around with the heat gun you might even be able to use some of a plastic bottle around that part just to protect it a bit um, just as a protection so if I was to use a grain like that uh, in that orientation with the head uh, facing like that on it I believe over time when you hit here say on the handle that will splinter away. See these grains there? These fibers here? They will splinter away front to back, uh, generally speaking. Yeah, it might have a bit more flex sometimes that way. However, if you tried to splinter this away, if you were to, to give it a good example, if you were to take a, ha a hatchet and hit that, it will be easier to split it this way than it will this way. Because it's with the grain there. It'll split away heaps easier. But if you go that way, it's harder to split it away. So that gives you an idea what I mean. So grain orientation, I would say for a claw hammer or a ball peen hammer, axe, uh, log splitter, uh, sledgehammer, any of those uh, blowing hammers where you have to give it a good blow or a good lever with it um, when, you, when you're when um, you trying a hard dead blow on something, you really need that good strength behind it. So I, I would go at least, uh, if not parallel to the blow, 30 degrees or 45 degrees maximum on a good piece of hardwood. Uh, I have heard some people also recommend some types of fruit trees uh, are good for handles because the, the, the branches have been uh, seasoned over the years to holding weight and stressing and they're quite good. Look, I, I don't know about that, but I have heard that. So the orientation, we've got that there, how I think it'd be okay to do that. Now for the marking outside of it. And uh, look, it's not that hard to mark it, and I'll explain that as I go. All right, now for marking out. So over the years, um, you know, in collecting stuff and gathering stuff through uh, recycle yards, scrap yards, and in through my work cleaning out uh, properties and that, you know, you come across a lot of hammerheads. This is just but a few 
that I've come across and hence I've had to handle lots of them because uh, they've had broken handles a lot of them but they've been good quality hammer heads and quite practical to use so also you come across broken handles where like this one's busted on the end so I do keep them as a pattern sometimes because I find the pattern uh, value on them is quite good here's a claw hammer handle has been broken off been abused and broken off just a Chinese one um, some sort of light softwood not very heavy at all obviously not enough strength in it here's a ball peen hammer handle now you could probably trim that down and use it on another ball peen hammer here you go here's a classic example of splitting uh, in there and you can see the grain orientation was that way on that because it split across the grain there and uh, that gives you an idea what I mean about that splitting especially if the front's been damaged and like I say you can actually see marks on the front edge here where it's been belted and abused and not cared for so I've kept a lot of these handles just for simple pattern patterns and um, so forth and like that's a sledgehammer one that's a 10 pound sledgehammer and it gives me roughly the the profile for the eye and also the taper and that's a, that's a handy thing to have okay so I'll show you how to mark here just for a simple um, simple uh, claw hammer and I'll just take this claw hammer because there's no handle in it and I'll give you an idea now usually the sides of the eye are parallel in this case here one side's a bit mauled you know it's not not that great crash shot of a head had to do it on let me just get it get another one I'll get knock a bit of that wood out of another one okay here I am back again so I took the, the, the waist out of that it was very simple tipped it upside down on top of a voice and because the handle was broken off flush here I punched it through from the bottom and of course the wedges came out there's the two wedges that were in it two different styles of wedges but nevertheless they did the job so let's pretend we're going to make a handle for that hammer now being a 20 ounce I know a hammer handle for a 20 ounce is anywhere between from the bottom of the head to the end of the handle uh, just for general purpose use is anywhere between 11 and 12 inches long or th you know roughly 275 to 300 millimeters long if you're talking metric you know, I, I say it in parallel a lot of time because I grew up with both and I explain it in both sometimes so what I would do first sorry about that up in camera is I would measure the eye to make sure what size it is now in this case it's one inch Oh, pretty well five eights I'll just double check up here yep five eights now this is a shop made hammer handle you could go out and buy one now I hazard a guess that you'd be paying a quite a bit for a shop made handle, hammer handle today whereas for a couple of dollars of scrap timber that you might have at home uh, you can make one up and look if you've got nothing better to do why not waste your time on making a hammer handle that you can appreciate that you've made or even for a gift for somebody uh, that they can say oh so and so made this for me and you can make a custom shape that you want to make so let's pretend we're going to make a hammer handle for that first thing I'm going to do is measure the eye like I said is one inch by five is eight five eighths the head depth is two inches so I'm going to allow more than two inches depth uh, on that there because I want a bit of excess sticking out the top of my head when I finish fitting the handle that way I can fit the wedges nice and neat I can cut it back and sand it flush with the top of my head so I'm going to draw a center line and I'll do this right here actually I'll just save on paper a bit here I'll fold that down again this is a bit of A3 paper just to give you an idea alright so I'm going to actually I'll do it on the other side so this is the side elevation by the side elevation I mean the width wise this is the edge elevation so side and width now be, be careful once you cut out your piece of timber to mark it out in orientation for the grain to work well so there's a center mark that we're going to do
Okay, so I'm going to quickly just show you how I marked it out. So if you're imperial, you're going to go half a five eighths, and you're going to put down your marks there, and um, that's how it's going to come out. So you sort of, I think it's about five sixteenths or something like that, and um, mark it out on either side of your thing. So even if you're uh, uh, metric, you're going to go eight millimeters. Um, sorry. Just marking this out here in 16 millimeters, and uh, you'll do two of those marks. Okay, so we've marked the width wise. Okay, now bear in mind the grain's going to go this way. Alright. This is the edge of... Sorry, I said I was going to do the side elevation first. Okay, what I'll do is another mark for that over here. That way we've got an idea of what's going on. I've marked the wrong one, so I'll confuse you guys. So this is the edge elevation. Edge. And this is a side elevation here. So that's like that. Right, so the edge is there like that. Now what we want to do, and like I said, put your head on there physically if you want to. Your hammer head on there physically. Then what I want you to do is put a mark at the bottom of your head. Allowing for, like I've allowed 5 sixteenths to, quarter inch to 5 sixteenths, through the top of my head there. Now from this point on, you're going to want to taper these out. But the first thing you need to do is work out how thin you want this part here of your handle. So we'll go into that in one second. Okay, so if you've got a hammer handle that you want to copy, say for instance you've got a claw hammer like this and you want to copy that hammer handle, you might want to go through and mark, put that same hammer handle on there like that. Mark center on the end of the handle, say for instance there's a center little mark, there's a center mark there, say. And put your head centre over your handle part like that. And what I want you to do then is to go through and put a, a mark where the, the main points are. So like there, there and there. So today we're going to do a hammer handle similar shape to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on there. And roughly the hammer head in this case will go to about there. So at this point, I'm going to put a mark here. I'll use a pencil to do that. A mark here. And then I'm going to find where it starts to rise up about here. And then the end of the handle goes to about there and then tapers off to about there. So I basically put, besides the end of the head, one, two, three, four or five marks. You don't need the fifth one here, you might just want to go straight with the edge. Or you might want to have parallel sides like I did on the last one I did. But if you want that little dish, we'll put that in. So then what I'm going to do, is I'm going to work out the width of this. And you can determine it, you know, just by eye like that. It's roughly three quarters of an inch wide. So, we're going to go three quarters. Excuse me. Uh, for that point there, which is about the middle here. So, one, two, three. I'll go, which is nine millimeters roughly, half or three quarters is roughly oh, 9.5 to be exact, but by the time you take your pencil mark and it'll be fine. So, I'm going to go roughly halfway between this point here, which I'll roughly square across. And I'll roughly square these points across too, just to give me an idea. Now I would allow a bit more on the end of your handle there too, because when it comes to driving your head on, you might splinter uh, the end of the handle a bit, and hence you drive the head edge end of the, you drive the head onto the handle like that, and that way that part might get splintered. So you might want to watch that, just allow a little bit more then. You can cut it off when you're done. 
So we want to really flare it out a little bit at this point here. So I'm suggesting we, we go at probably an eighth of an inch on either side at this point here. I'll just square that across too. So this is the point where it's going to swell out. To. So we're going to go one eighth of an inch more at that point there or roughly you know three millimeters more on either side. Now you can go square with a, with a rule and go straight from that point where the bottom of your head is to there uh, like that which is probably the easiest thing for most people to do but if you want to be really fancy you can use a curved thing like that and make a curved mark we won't use that at that point but from that point to this point now we need to measure this this width if this is what we want you can make this any shape you want to just remember it's your handle you can make it any shape you want you want, might want to put bumps in and outs on it or little corrugations on it that's entirely up to you but uh, what you've got to work on is um, you know these sort you know whatever size you want to make it but if you copy on another handle this is how you do it so this one here at that point is about an inch one inch roughly just a little bit over an inch actually but I think one inch will be fine at this point here so let's go half inch either side there half inch one inch now on this one you might want to do your curve because this is a bit of a hollow see you know this is probably not going to be the right curve which it isn't so you really need something with a big radius the other thing to do is just curve your ruler a little bit like this get your ruler and just flex it enough if you can and once you get it flexed to your marks yeah, which I'm going to find very hard to do with one end yeah, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> well my ruler has got a natural curve in it so I might as well use it so I'm going to use the natural curve in my ruler to get that from that mark there to that mark there you only have to mark one side because we're going to fold it in half in a minute and cut it with a pair of scissors. Okay? Then we're going to uh, put a bit of a mark from there to there as in a hollow form. That's probably still not big enough. I'll go and get a bigger radius to do that. Alright, okay. So we take a larger radius. But before we do that even... We've got to work it and determine the width of this last piece. And in this case, look, it's about, oh, mate. It's about inch and a quarter, a bit over an inch and a quarter, I reckon. Yeah, it's about an inch and a quarter. So we, we mark out half of that measurement on this very end here. So in metric that would be 32, 16 millimetres. On either side of that. If we go on metric. And then we take a big big radius and we do this. And I'm going to show you something else to do in a minute. This is going to give you a little dish in the heel. This is probably still not big enough, by the way. Um, I noticed as I was doing it, it's still not the gradual. This is just an, and then we can just bevel that little last bit off. Of course, allowing this little piece here to stick through for driving your head on later. So what we're going to do is we'll get a pair of scissors, fold this in half, and I'll cut it out to that line there. Actually, before I do do that, I'm just going to. Just run a little tiny radius over this corner here, just to make this corner here not so sharp. So I might be able to use this little one here. Uh, just to go from, just tangent those two lines there, and that will round it over a bit. Just so it's a bit more gentle. I think that will be right. Although I'm still concerned about this being a bit too dished. Just hang on one second, I'll see what I can do there. 
So yeah, no, I'm not really happy with that. I think it's a bit too dished and it's going to end up narrow in this point. We don't want that. You could use your handle that you're copying and just trace over that if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to. Um, that's entirely up to you. Like I could do that now and, and just trace around that if I wanted to, but I can't guarantee it's going to end up a nice curve. It's certainly more gradual than what we had. But let's let's do something here. I'll just put a I'll just put a um a little tack at this point in here just to hold the edge of my ruler. I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna put a mark. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so at this point here, I'm going to just flex my ruler a little bit. And bear in mind, I am going to, um, I'm going to fold this in half. So I only have to do this mark once. There we go. There. All right, I didn't realize but my camera accidentally switched off. And I'd already cut out the side piece. Very sorry. So I'm going to show you basically what I did. It's the um, <clears throat> same as what we were doing before. I folded my piece of paper in half like this. And I actually took, uh, I put a center line like I had before. I'll have to show you how to do this because uh, some of you might want to know. Actually fold it a center line like this. Now you can mark this out on your timber. You can mark this straight in situation on the piece of timber. Say for instance you're going to use an inch and a quarter or get a piece of uh, one inch, uh, an inch and a quarter say by one inch and you're going to, because it's roughly one inch thick this way, um, you will, you can mark this out on the side of it. No worries at all. That's just your rough piece of timber. So what I did then, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> is I took my edge elevation and I transferred these marks because we need all those marks to line up again on the side elevation and then I squared through like this okay I just squared through them marks like that so I could line all this stuff up again And of course, don't forget to allow a little bit out here for your, your waist, okay? For where you drive it on. It's not crucial, but it does help, I find. Now, last time I showed you how to mark it out on the edge by your own shape. This time, I'm going to just show you, if you've got an existing hammer handle that you like, say one like this, I want you to get it and place it on uh, where you want it to go, right? So, I'm going to put a mark centre here and a mark center here which I've done all right I've worked out why my phone kept switching itself off and my camera on the phone that is it's because my storage is full and I just had to delete some other footage I had on there so I'm going to line up the center mark and this point here but line up these points here so we don't go over and I'm going to line up my center mark at the top and my center mark at the bottom so it's halfway and then I'm just going to simply, from this point here, not the, the eye part, from this point here, I'm going to trace like this. Sorry, I've made a mistake already. Okay, so there we have it. Half our handle. Can you see that? Half our handle is marked on there. Sorry if it's bad footage. Bad light in here. It's not the best place to do footage. And one day I might uh, afford better lights. Right, then at the top here, quite simple. Half an inch either side because we know our eye width here is one inch. So I need to mark half an inch either side. Half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. 
straight edge with a ruler straight through. Straight edge with a ruler straight through. Now, I need to square this little mark here. This is where a little shoulder kicks through. Straight through. And what I'm going to do is measure that size there, which is that measurement there, roughly 5 eighths. And I'm going to line up those marks there. So I'm just doing that on both sides and the head. I didn't have to do both sides and the head because I'm cutting it out halfway. Then I'm going to take that, fold it in half like this, and I will cut that out with my pair of scissors, allowing for that little bit of waste at the bottom uh, for driving the head later and like I said you can mark this out in situation you can put a bit of masking tape on the side if you watch my last video you'll see how I put masking tape on the side of the blank piece of timber and I marked with pencil onto that masking tape because I could see the masking tape the pencil on the masking tape easier than on the timber you might be lucky enough to have a light colored piece of timber you might want to use a little felt pen or something all right so there we have it again i've done it for a second time that's his side elevation now if you look at that in the future once we've driven the head on we're going to cut this piece off here but that's basically how it's going to look and if you want to be practical about it once we've sanded that and trimmed that up and cleaned it up a bit and cut it to mark i'll cut a little bit over the line there so that's why it's not fitting and um that's going to go in there. Hang on. I'm making a lawyer out of me. Like that. That's going to go in there, and that is your hammer handle. Like that. And we'll, of course, you'll cut a wedge. Now, when I was, what I would say is if you're going to cut a wedge, uh, just say, for instance, you drive your head on and it goes on nice and tight to there. There. You know, drive your wedge into about there. I wouldn't go much deeper than that. Some people might go a bit deeper, go into about that depth there and, um, you know, put a nice slender wedge in and then drive your cross wedges in if you're going to use two, one, one if you're going to use one at a 45 degree so it goes from there, there, one at 45, otherwise put two in and you might be able to use the old ones that came out. So that's your side elevation, this is your edge, edge elevation. <coughs> Just pretend uh, this is a piece of timber. That we're going to glue it to we just stick it to that or you can um, cut these out for a template for further use in the future if you're happy with the design and then um, go from there you can you can glue the uh, just mark it as in a template now you're gonna to have to look back over the, the past handle videos that I've done to show here when I cut the off cuts off I re-stick them back on so I can keep it flat on the bandsaw table uh, and you'll need to do that even if you use a jigsaw uh, if you're using a coping saw and you want to mark it out again it's going to be hard to do but you can do it yes uh, something with a square cut would be better like a jigsaw I mean a, a table type of jigsaw a hand jigsaw would be fine a bandsaw is great uh, you could even get away with a scroll, scroll saw to cut these out now we go on to shaping and just quickly with shaping literally um, the profile that you want if you notice with some of the hammer handles I did uh, see this one here it's just a simple round over there probably a 5 16 round over and uh, as you come down on you you can actually if you're using a router table you can kick it a bit if you're not using a router table and you want to use a handheld router I suggest you use a trim router that way when you ride off this part it'll follow your taper down and up again uh, you won't get a perfect finish on it so you'll have to do a bit of sanding by hand but it'll be good enough for what you want alternatively you just might want to chamfer the edges with a 45 or just uh, spoke shave the edges to the shape you want that's entirely up to you uh, but cut the bulk out with your bandsaw or your jigsaw or whatever and then uh, start shaping it by hand you will have to cut the groove in there, if you haven't got a band, sort of cut it nice and square. Use a tenon saw or a thin uh, 
handsaw, cut it nice and square and parallel down, and then cut your wedge. If you've got a disc sander or a belt sander to make your wedge nice and tight, that's good. I have started gluing my wedges in over the years, and I found that's that's practical because uh, timber wedges can come loose. You won't have any problem with your steel wedges or your aluminium wedges. They'll stay in because they've got little grip parts on them. But that's pretty well how I shaped that and marked it out. Ball clean hammer handles. You still have to do a side elevation and an edge elevation. Um, and you might decide to turn around thing uh, in your lathe or whatever and just flatten the sides down and round it off and sand it in the lathe. This here is a a mallet handle, as you can see I've turned a spigot on it, I've done it for a job and I mustn't have used it, but that was a round handle, if you wanted you could probably just plane the edges off that and use it for a handle if you wanted to in some shape or form. Alright, I hope that was a help to you, and I hope that clarified a few things that you need to know. If you need to know any more, please ask the question in the comments. I'd rather ask the question than sort of think, oh I wish you described that better. Please post a comment and ask a question if you need to ask a question. I would appreciate that. Uh, it does take time to answer those. However, look, I know the frustration if something's been missed out. But I hope that clarified a lot for you today. Now, if you'd like me to do a video to explain something else a bit better, I may be able to do that too. In the future, I don't know when it'll be, I'll look at doing some offset turning for ovals, oval shape. A proper handle making machine that does that uses a blank uh, template to call it, copy and it uses a follower and it follows sort of like a key cutting machine in some ways except it does cylindrical shapes and it has a follower that follows and a bit that cuts at the same time hence you get identical matches it's 3D sort of uh, template copying so like I said I hope that was a help to you well look I appreciate you watching my videos Please hit the thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. It does help the channel. It helps it get out there, gets more views. Uh, look, YouTube likes that. They like you to uh, stimulate the uh, the uh, the viewer and um, the audience, and hence you get more views. So, look, I I'm not out to, to make a big show out of this or anything, but it'd be great to uh, to get a few more views there, and get a few more likes and comments there. I appreciate for the likes and comments I've got. Haven't subscribed? Please subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. That will uh, let you know of upcoming videos. And like I said, there's videos there uh, in the playlist. Hence the handle making videos and many other videos in the playlist there. Look them up. There might be something that might be a help to you. Thanks for joining us and bye for now.